Hey, today on the Game Changers podcast, we're going to talk about a subject that all business owners really need to be aware of, especially those folks maybe starting out in business or maybe been in business for a year or two, but need to get things moving to the next level and improve some, some operations and financials. So we have an expert coach in the EOS world with us today, uh, Jody Skogan, and she comes to us from Cedar Rapids, Iowa where it's a whole lot cooler there than it is in Houston, Texas. Jody, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you. Oh, thank you, Jeff. It is a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, so uh, it's great to talk to somebody from the Hawkeye State. Uh, my parents grew up in Iowa. I went to the University of Iowa. I love Iowa. Um, and how uh, did you grow up there? Are you from Iowa? Did you move there? I or? am. Yep, I am. I uh, grew up in Northeast Iowa in a small town called Waverly and oh, yeah, definitely have been is. a Hawk. How, do you okay? And I've been a Hawkeye fan absolutely my whole life. So I was in okay. elementary school when BJ Armstrong was playing uh, basketball oh, yeah. for the Hawkeyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and love being a Hawkeye. So glad, glad to know we've got that in common, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. And so how does the football team look uh, this year? What do you think? Mm, that's a great question. You know what? I We should have my husband in this conversation because he absolutely knows. He even follows some of the recruiting stuff with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah. So okay. my hope is the coaching team is unified. I hope that they um, are Me really uh, <laughs> together <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, that the team just proceeds with great confidence. I also uh, have a shout out to Delaney McSweeney. She plays uh, for the, the women uh, for volleyball. Uh, for the Hawkeyes, oh, okay. so had right, known Delaney. Uh, Delaney for a long time. So it's really fun to know know one of one of the Hawkeyes uh, that does just a phenomenal job representing yeah. our state. And yeah. of course, we'd be completely remiss if we did not mention the women's basketball team. Oh no, kidding! Caitlin Clark and her whole team just so Boy. exciting. Fantastic! Yeah, yeah I, I, such a great I, picture of team. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, hopefully they'll have another great year. Caitlin's coming back as I understand yeah. it. Correct. Yeah. yeah so, that's right. yeah. all right. So I could probably talk about the Hawkeyes and sports, you know, all day, but we're here to talk about EOS. But before we get into that, Jody, tell us yeah. a little bit about yourself, your background and uh, what got you to be an EOS coach. Sure, absolutely. Well, again, Jeff, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I mm -hmm. am an Iowa girl, grew up here, so Iowa girl through and through. Love this great state. So if any of your listeners haven't yet made the trek to Iowa, it's a great place to come and visit most of the times of the year, uh, especially <laughs> in the fall, the spring, hey, most of the summer. Um, and it, people love outdoor sports. Still in the cooler winter, than so. Houston, Texas, though, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We do deal with some humidity. That that is also the case. But uh, yeah, so I uh, I love Iowa. Have had an opportunity to travel around the world, but uh, home is definitely Iowa, and I'm really really glad for it. So I am, as you said, a, a coach for businesses uh, with a system called EOS, which stands for Entrepreneurial operating system. And so EOS is a, a really great set of tools, practical concepts, um, tools that really help an organization and leaders in particular clarify, simplify, understand where they're headed and how they're going to get there and do it in a healthy way. So I have um, been an EOS implementer. I was I just I love it. Here's how I was exposed to it if it's helpful uh, to know that. So um, about Absolutely. three years ago, yeah, I became a, a director of organizational health in a company that uh, is in the construction industry, actually, a, a national company called Benchmark Inc. What they do is provide roofing and paving consulting services for major manufacturers, school districts, hospitals. Anyway, I came on staff there actually in the middle, early, early weeks, really, of the pandemic. And um, they were super interested in investing in the organizational health of their company company of about 115 employees nationwide. And okay. I was honored with the opportunity to come on staff there with them. And that was at a time when they were looking at a book called Traction by Gina Wickman, mm -hmm. which details the the whole EOS um, resource. Yeah, so yeah, it's you're like, familiar with like, that book, I believe. 
Oh yeah, it's like the go-to for EOS. I have a copy right behind me. <laughs> Absolutely, good. So when I came on uh, to that team um, on, on in a leadership role, that team was determining whether or not to implement EOS. So we began that discernment process, really vetted it. You know, there are a lot of systems out there. And in talking with a couple of implementers, we felt just like we need to do this. It was a strong organization. I was coming into a strong organization, uh, but they were desiring to get stronger, to get clear, to become more aligned. And so we began working with an EOS implementer and he was indeed a teacher facilitator coach in the EOS um, operational system. And so mm -hmm. I had a front row seat to a massive transformation in a really strong organization to get even stronger. So I was the internal banner waiver, I guess, for lack of a better word. I was the, the right. person in the organization which who was helping to roll out this system. And we'll talk about it here in a second. But I got to see the transformation. I got to see just uh, organizational health take a huge upgrade in that, um, in that business. And so it was... Uh, almost two years into that journey, when after one of our leadership team uh, full day sessions with our implementer, uh, he called me that night and he said, Jody, I think you really should think about becoming an implementer. And I was super honored. He's a, he's really a legend in, uh, in the community of EOS. And uh, so my husband and I, we thought about it, prayed about it and uh, learned more, you know, dug into what that would mean. And in December, we decided to purchase uh, a franchise. So uh, I went to training and, and became a professional EOS implementer. So now I get awesome. to work with other businesses, actually in addition to that one. So our implementer was ready to kind of release uh, that company uh, because of proximity for him. Um, and uh, and so now they are my client, which I, which I love. And I have other clients who Perfect. I'm helping to implement EOS. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. before we get into some of the components of EOS, and since we have listeners really all over the country and thankfully really internationally, EOS is something that you can uh, implement and you can work with clients virtually, you, or you can travel there, but you can also do it virtually. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely okay. right. So I can certainly work with uh, clients virtually and with technology today in fact our even our comfortability with it has really helped make connections just like you you and me we're talking from yeah. texas to iowa and mm -hmm. uh, we are we're in relationship we're learning from each other we're being encouraged by one another we're being challenged by one another right we uh, have opportunity to connect in that way so i'm open to traveling i love to travel actually and uh, also in about a four and a half hour radius of Cedar Rapids. Now you might know this, but I don't know if your listeners know this. Within four and a half hours of Cedar Rapids, you can get to Chicago, Milwaukee, Madison, the Twin Cities, so Minneapolis, St. Paul, Omaha, of course, right. Des Moines, Kansas City, and St. Louis. That's yeah, all within four of, and a half. Like we're right in the middle metropolitan of areas. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, I would love to work with anybody who's interested. Good. Good. So now let's talk a little bit about the components of, of EOS. What, what is EOS uh, made up of? And I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's that kind of hard to wrap your head around initially, right? So if you come into somebody, they don't know anything about EOS and you start talking about it. They're like, man, I stop. I, I don't, I don't really even know what you're talking about. So yeah. just describe kind of high level. What is, what is, com what is EOS comprised of? You bet. So EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System, is a simple, proven business operating system that can really help an entrepreneurial organization clarify, simplify, and achieve its vision. And what we as implementers, if you think of that word implement, so I'm from Iowa, there's a lot of implementer, there's implements, right? We think about farming implements. <laughs> so I, I had to Google, or no, I didn't Google. I had, I looked up of that the, those terms of implement and implementer. So I'm going to read straight from, you know, Google. Uh, yeah. So implement, uh, what, what, what is an implement? It's a tool, utensil, other piece of equipment, especially as used for a particular purpose. And so an well, implementer is someone. You said yeah. farm, farm implement? 
which, yes. you know, I, I know what you're talking about, but there's a lot of people out there that are like, farm implemented. What are the, what is what? that? <laughs> <laughs> what are so I'm, so glad, I'm glad you described it. Yeah. Yeah. They're those tools, those pieces of equipment that actually are designed for a particular purpose. I love that. So as an implementer, I'm someone who helps to put maybe decisions or plans or agreements into effect using those tools. And so when it all boils down to it, I'm a, I'm a teacher, facilitator, coach around simple tools that make up entrepreneurial operating system or EOS. So my goal in working with my clients is to teach, coach, facilitate them in their understanding of where they're going, how they're going to get there, making sure everybody's 100% aligned in the organization on that, and then getting traction. So you know, actually executing on that vision every day, having everybody in your organization doing that. And then healthy, we want to do that in a healthy way. We want to grow a team to be cohesive and fun loving and functioning well together. And because uh, oftentimes, as we know, as humans, we aren't like that. And I was just as goes say, back, you're, yeah, you're sort of describing Shangri-La and we know that there, that it doesn't happen very often. So it's, what, in, a, in a situation where there's not alignment and there's some hesitancy, what do you do? That's right. Well, we get really excited about that because there's a lot of opportunity to get aligned. A lot of times a business owner has in mind what he or she would love to see out of their business, but there's a miss in the translation between what they have in their head and their hearts and their team. And so we get into room together. So when a, when an organization decides to implement EOS, work with an implementer like me, the leadership team steps away from the business, kind of gets above the tree line, above the day to day. And we get really serious about clarifying what is the vision of this organization. There are eight questions we actually come to an answer with, the, the team does, and I help facilitate that. And those eight questions are, what are your core values? As an organization, what are your core values? Got to be singing from the same hymnal. Abs absolutely. Yep. We got to be on the same page. We want to build a culture here. And, um, and so what are our core values? Our second question that we answer is, what's your core focus? What's the core focus, your sweet spot as an organization, what we do so well and what we're focused on so that we can see the difference between distractions and what, mm -hmm. what's tr truly our, uh, our core focus. The third question is, what's your 10-year target? It can be this number one business goal. It could be anywhere from five to 30 years or more, but what's mm -hmm. the number one goal of that business so that you're all attentive to where you're headed? If, if you all have in your mind's eye a little different destination, that's just a recipe for chaos and confusion and frustration. So what's, yeah, lack your, of alignment. what's your, yeah, absolutely. Lack of alignment. So does it have to be 10 years though, Jody? I mean, Jody's, it, nope. it seems like that's a long ways off. And, and, and if anything we learned with COVID, mm. our world can change on a dime, you know, that's I mean, right. with a matter yeah. of months. So that's right. can we just like pick a target of maybe three years? You can, you know, that's up to a team, but we're looking okay. for a long range number one goal. So uh, okay. I would say anywhere between five and, but in 30 years, you could, you could pick something larger, but you want to make sure you're clear on that. Uh, okay. The fourth question is what's your marketing strategy? And this isn't just for the marketing people in your organization. It's for everyone to say, who is our target market? Who's our ideal client or customer? Yeah. And then what do we want to communicate out? to them? What is it that we want to say? What's unique about us as an organization that could cause them to say, hey, we got to do business with them? Yeah. Well, um, to the, some extent, every employee is selling, right? Yeah. Well, representing, right? Being an ambassador of that organization sure. in everything they mm -hmm. do, according to their core values, right? And yeah. then you take that 10-year picture, whatever that number one business goal is, and you say, okay, well, what's it going to look like three years from now? So we define ah, that. There you go. Okay. There's that three-year picture. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to know, we, we look at the numbers, what's revenue going to look like, profit going to look like, any other measurables. But then what, if I was to peel back the roof of the organization that you're in, what does it need to look like in three years to know that we're on track, we're, on, we're aligned with that big number one goal? And then there's three more questions that we uh, invite teams to answer. 
in view of that vision, what's it need to look like in one year? What are the three to seven business goals for the next calendar year? And then we back that down just one more step. What needs to happen in the next 90 days? We call those rocks. Uh, what needs to happen in the next 90 days in order to be aligned in, in line toward that mm -hmm. number one business goal or destination? Yeah. Last is what are your issues? We all have them, right? What are the you things bet. that are holding you back? What are even, what are your opportunities? Sometimes we hear that word issues and we think negative, but and sometimes they are. But mm -hmm. what are the opportunities, things that we want to make sure we're keeping our eye on in order to not miss opportunity or to not clear away some things that are holding us back? Yeah. So we put yeah. that all in one document called the Vision Traction Organizer. It's a two-page document that is Boy, something that's a lot everyone to put in the two pages. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I had one, one, uh, she's a dentist, uh, very successful dentist here in Iowa. I believe she owns the largest uh, independently owned dentist, dentist practice in the state of Iowa. Hmm. And she just said, it's elegant. She used that word. Wow. elegant When you, when you're able to share with every employee, what those, those eight answers, those eight questions are, and they can see this is even, even for prospective employees or brand new hires as you're bringing on board, you're able to say, this is what we're about. Yeah. And Boy, there's clarity there. Elegant. That's, that's pretty impressive to, to use as a, as, on a business document. I mean, I've done zillions of business plans. Nobody's ever said, boy, that, that business plan, Jeff, that's elegant. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Well, one thing, that's good. One thing I love is that it works in nearly every context, uh, whatever the industry manufacturers love EOS, people in the medical community love EOS. Um, there are some schools that run on EOS. There are nonprofits that run on EOS. You name the industry, it can work because these are tools that can be applied within any context gotcha. to get clarity around vision, traction, and healthy. Okay. So give us uh, your favorite success story. Oh boy. I know. I knew you're going to ask me this question. I'm like, gosh, which one do <laughs> I pick? Well, one of my favorite, uh, so for me, um, experience abundant life is like a, a catchphrase that I love to think about. Like I want to live an abundant life. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. I want to live a life where I've got, and actually there's a, a book called the EOS life by Gino Wickman. Gino is the founder of EOS. Right, and right. there are five things he talks about. Uh, one is doing what you love with people you love, making a huge difference, being compensated appropriately with time for other passions. How many entrepreneurs, business owners, or leaders are able to say, I'm, I'm living that? Well, that's Not a tough a lot. one. Yeah. Not a I lot. I would say very few. Very few. And so I'm going for the bigger, the biggest picture possible, really, in working with clients. Like, how is your life working? Do you have time for other passions? Are you doing what you love? Are you working alongside people that you love? Are you making a huge difference? <laughs> I mean, I think that's what we're called to do in this world. Are Absolutely. you making a huge difference, right? Yeah. Thus game and, changers, Jody. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You are, Jeff. You are. Well, You're we're making trying. a huge difference. I love it. But, and but somebody and I asked want to help that, people do that. Somebody asked me the, just the other day, you know, Jeff, what do you do for fun? My answer was a complete blank. I mean, okay. so I, I can't, yeah. I mean, it's not like I don't have a good life. I love my life, but I don't, I have not found that balance. So I, that last question that Gina Wickman asks, yeah. I don't have a good answer. <laughs> hey, we should work together. So, I'd love so, to help yeah, you discover that. <laughs> I, I probably need all the help I can get. But oh, I yeah. think that we need to really understand that it's to be successful in your business is not just the business. It's you as a person and getting that abundance and addressing those five questions. I think that that is a comprehensive approach to finding true success. Yeah. So when you ask about a success story, I would say anytime I have opportunity to help a leader go from where they are, and many times that's stressed out, overworked, um, continually worried, 
uh, always sort of having this low grade dread of what, what am I going to do next? Or, or how am I going to deal with this issue or whatever? If we can help bring a business leader from there to a place where they can step away on vacation and truly be away, they can take time away from the business that they can enjoy time with their family. So one, one story there is, um, is one of my clients and, and when, when, uh, we started implementing EOS, uh, he would, he would have uh, identified that he was in the weeds, you know, so many people were coming yeah. to him for all the answers, big and the little, and for him, he's a visionary. That's one of the one of the seats that we help clarify in an organization. So big picture, lots of ideas. Uh, so he was he was stressed out already because he, he was in the weeds and he's a he's visionary. In the weeds. Absolutely. And and everybody had become dependent. The organization had become such that the that the that each individual was dependent on him for those answers and yet they were stuck. Yeah. And so to be able to see a major transformation in his life where he was able to then hand off responsibility with clarity, not just in frustration. Why can't you people do what you should do, right? Because visionaries don't really enjoy holding people accountable often. They'd rather just people just, can you just do the thing that we hired you to do, <laughs> right? But when life happens and situations- That doesn't always work out it, too well. <laughs> no, no. And, it, and when a culture sort of is nurtured where there's this interdependence that's unhealthy, that has what that happened. So for him to be able to get clarity and for them to get clarity in the organization and who is accountable for what, and then him being able to let go of all those little things and for people to have autonomy and ability to run in their lane, uh, he was major, major load lifted off of his shoulders. Life yeah. literally changed. And, and then so I got to go a little... Is, yeah, is he able to take vacation and enjoy himself yes, now? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. And time to get away and do the thing he's best at, which is think about new ideas and build relationships within his industry. These things that he wasn't able to do because he was, he was in the weeds. So I love wow. that. And then okay. I love the impact it has on the rest of a family, right? Or children. When business leaders who are working so hard to help to help lead an organization and all of their employees so that they can put food on the table and the kids of the owner, right? Who's continually yeah. on the short end of the stick. Um, man, we wanna change that too. So I feel like there's opportunity for generational impact in what we do That's because profound. we wanna help kids. I know, I, I get goosebumps about it, Jeff. Uh, because we want to help kids, all generations, do what they're intended to do. Get after the things that uh, I would say God has put on their hearts to do. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Is there ever a situation that EOS may not be a good fit? Yeah, I definitely okay. think so. What would that uh, be? I would, say, I, I would say you look at the leader and the leadership team, and if they aren't growth oriented as an example if they're not open minded if they're not willing to be open honest vulnerable with themselves with the people closest to them EOS is is not going to work EOS is great for organizations that are growing like gangbusters like oh man we can't even hardly keep up and mm -hmm. it's for organizations where people are really struggling we need more work we need we need new clients we need whatever um, but if a leader or leadership team or owners aren't open, um, they're not growth oriented, they're not willing to, you know, change. Uh, right. we, we have a phrase we say, we want them to be more afraid of the status quo than they are of change. So if they just want to hold on oh. to what has always been, probably not going to be a good fit with EOS. Yeah. Well, but I will say too, sense. I got to say too, that sometimes people are concerned about preserving the core. And that's a EOS works in an organization that has a strong core. And well, the uh, core, doesn't yeah. that relate pretty closely to the mission though? I mean, it's yeah. kind of who you are and uh, EOS has to work based on 
the mission and the vision of the of the organization and yeah. you know you're not going to you're not really going to mess with that i mean that's who you are that's your that's the whole that's your right. reason for being it's funny though when you have a team let's say of six leaders and you ask them all to write down what's the vision of the organization if they write something a little different from each other there's an opportunity for clarity there yikes you know that's yeah. that's I would consider that a bad sign. I would want everybody, yeah. especially in leadership, boy, they are, they have to be on the same page with where, where we're trying to go. Because absolutely. if they're not, we're, what are they telling everybody else? There's going to be completely a bunch of confused team members not knowing the direction of the organization. Have you ever read the book, The Boys in the Boat? Are you familiar Boys in the with Boat. That? Boys no, in the I'm going to write that um, down. Oh man, it is such a good book. Um, Boys in the Boat. It's uh, let's see. Who's the author? Do you do you recall? Yeah, yeah. Let me just. Uh, the author of Boys in the Boat is Daniel James Brown. Okay. And it's the story. Um, so the tagline of the book: The Boys in the Boat, Nine Americans, and Their Epic Quest for Gold at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Okay. And, you know, I'm not familiar with the sport of rowing, but I'll tell you what, this book just gives me chills because there's such an importance in incredible alignment with a team that's on a rowing team. You know, the need to get super clear on where you're going and be in sync together. And that just doesn't happen naturally for people. It, yeah. it it's a unique team that can get in sync like that. And, uh, and so that's what we aim to do in our journey with implementing EOS with our clients is to get them, get leaders in the room and get to the point where they can say, this is clearly our mission. This is clearly our purpose, cause, and passion. And Rowing so that every other action, that's sync. right. Yeah. That's right. And then we continually come back to that every 90 days with our leadership team. So that's what we do. Okay. We have a more intensive process on the front end of implementing. We meet every 30 days for three sessions to get clear on that vision traction organizer, teach some tools that are gonna help in the, the rollout of EOS. And then after that point, every 90 days, the leadership team steps again away out of the whirlwind and uh, gets makes sure they're aligned. Any adjustments we need to make in our alignment and then looks back and says, how did we do in the last 90 days? And then looks ahead, what's, again, most important in the next 90 days? What are our priorities so that we are unified in our approach to continue toward our vision together? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So lots of tools in EOS that fit right into the different components. Do you have a favorite tool or oh, one that boy. may really resonate with some of our listeners? Gosh, that's a good one. We have um, about 20 tools that we teach over the two-year journey that we take with our clients. The accountability chart is one I know you yeah. love. Yeah. yeah well, so I mean, it let's get, talk about that, huh? gets everybody on the same page, right? That's right. Absolutely. Once you've got clarity around where you're going, well, actually, even to make sure you've got the right people in the room, you want to have the right structure. So the accountability chart you might picture an org chart, an organizational chart, but this mm -hmm. is like massive upgrade to an organizational chart. So the EOS accountability chart, one of my favorite tools, is a chart which shows first the major functions in the organization. Thinking functions instead of titles for a moment, and titles are things that you end up needing to have for a variety of reasons, but first saying, What's the structure that's necessary for our organization mm -hmm. to, to be doing what we do best? It's going to make so, it work efficiently and effectively. That's not right. Because it's so, cool, but because it works. That's exactly right. We're not just yeah. following everybody else and how they do it. We should do it too. Right. Instead, right. we create an accountability chart. And um, for, your, for your listeners, to so just be able to picture this in your mind's eye, there's a box uh, we call it a seat on the accountability chart. Only one person can sit in a seat. And um, in that box is the functional title at the top, the function. 
what's mm-hmm. the what's the role that this person plays in the organ what's the function that whoever sits in that seat is carrying out and accountable for in the organization and in that box then there are somewhere between three to five bullets um dots jot dots is what one of my friends calls them there <laughs> there are roles what are the what are the roles for which that person who sits in that seat is accountable I'm not thinking names at all yet yeah. but what are those roles and then well, I like the term either. jot dot. I'm going to use that term jot dot. dot. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, love I love it. I love it. So that person knows what they're accountable for at the end of the day, what they're accountable for. And it's, it's, it, it creates clarity. And then they can also look at the accountability chart of everyone in the organization and see then what I'm accountable for. And I can see what Jeff, what you're accountable for and what Sally mm-hmm. is accountable for. And we, we have a greater understanding of how we function together. And so then when it comes time to, we call them quarterly conversations, where a leader meets one-on-one with their um, their employee and says, How, how's it going in these three to five things for which you're accountable? Um, and asking the question, this is another part, you might have to cut me off here, but there's <laughs> another piece of that we call GWC, get it, want it, and capacity. Before somebody is in that seat, we say, do they get it? Do they get it? Do all the neurons in their brain light up when they hear about that role? Yeah. That they are going to be seated in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So do they get it? Do they, do they understand what's, what that role entails? Uh, Are they even excited when there's a challenge there? Because they know what to do about it. They know how to get after it. They're eager to learn. Do they want it? So that's the W. So G, get it. W want it. Do they want the role? Sometimes people are just like, well, I know you need somebody in this role. So, I mean, I'm here. Oh, like, got to no, be jazzed about the jot up. dots. Yeah. I want to be jazzed <laughs> right. about my jot dots. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And last is capacity. Do they have the the mental, physical, even spiritual capacity? Do they have a time capacity. Maybe they need to mm-hmm. learn some things. That's great. But do they have the capacity for the for that seat? Yeah. And that brings a lot of clarity in an organization. Yeah. Well, the thing that's so great about an accountability chart is, is just as you said, it brings clarity to everybody's role and not just your own, but then you know what everybody else is doing and yeah. what they're accountable for. So there's no confusion. There's no like turf battles. I mean, if you've ever been in a toxic organization where there are all kinds of turf battles, that yeah. is so ugly and unproductive and it just leads to chaos and Absolutely you know toxic manipulation yeah and so i think the accountability chart really is a way to make sure that you don't have that toxic organization everybody's clear on what is expected of them and others and it's a way to keep yourself accountable and then as a good teammate to s- support others in helping Absolutely. them be accountable for what their jot dots are. So, <laughs> That's exactly right. I yeah. got to tell you one more tool. Can I, Jeff? Yeah, one please. One more tool I love. Okay. Well, meetings. Let's talk about meetings a second because people tend to have um, pretty many. strong feelings. <laughs> too many <laughs> meetings. They tend to have too many meetings. Yeah. So there is a tool called the Level 10 Meeting, which I would say um, maybe even if people haven't heard of EOS or Traction, they might have heard of a level 10 meeting or an L10 meeting because they are catching on yeah. in our culture. People are, but this is an EOS tool, the level 10 meeting, and it is a, an agenda, a specific agenda that's followed to have an incredibly awesome meeting. I personally feel like I am allergic to bad meetings. Like who enjoys those? Either Nobody. meetings where they're kind of going nowhere. Uh, or and they last meeting. forever. They last like, forever. Can we please and, end this? <laughs> and we just talked about that last week and the week before and three months before that, we still haven't solved it. So the level 10 meeting is probably yeah, right up there is one of my favorite EOS tools where the same people get in the room, they start on time, they end on time, you know, hello, how about that? Mm-hmm. Right. Let's yeah. start there. Love um, it. They solve at least one, at least one key issue in the organization during that time. They get clear on what's next, what the next steps are, who's accountable for those things. Um, they do a report, we, we do this thing, a report out section at the front end of the meeting too, where we quickly review some things that help uh, us know that we're on the right track 
again, so toward our vision, right. Uh, right. Our, our number one biggest business goal. And, uh, and, and anyway, so I could talk a long time about, about the level 10 meeting, but at the end of the meeting, uh, you recap your to do's. You think, is there anybody else who needs to know something that we decided here? How about that for an idea? How often is there confusion because of a decision made, but we didn't get clear about how we're communicating that out in the organization. And last, we rate the meeting one to 10, 10 being best. That's how you get the name level 10 meeting. Everybody yeah. at the, on the team rates, how did we do today on a scale from one to 10, 10 being best? How did we do today? Did we start on time, end on time? Did we solve at least one issue? Did we get on a tangent and talk about something for, ooh, and that really killed our momentum. Or yeah. we, we majored in the minors. We were dealing with an issue, but man, we've got something much more important. If, if any of those things happen, people rate the meeting lower and then self-correct as you go so that you're not- well, I was just going to ask, how do you, I mean, everybody it. rates it low, then what? Yeah, well, if you rate it, we say eight or less, you have to explain why. Why did you give it that rating? And every once in a while, for me as a facilitator of those meetings, I will also ask why to give it a nine, you know, what was strong about what we did so that we can continue to self-correct and get better. Sometimes people just like, you know, go along with the rest of the group. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be the outlier and say this movie, this meeting really was brutal. You know, right. everybody gave it a nine. I don't want to give it a five. Yeah. Well, then they're not, they're, <laughs> so, then they're not doing well in the core values piece. Probably, exactly. Right? Exactly. So I think everybody has to be held to the same standard and if they thought it was a nine great why they thought it was a five okay we got some work to do why that's why do you, right why did you rate it so low what so. needs to happen next time so that we are better one of my exactly. clients their one of their core values is be a strong team based on relationships and trust so if somebody's phoning it in with a nine every week and they can't answer why or we aren't, we aren't solving issues or people aren't coming prepared they don't have their to-dos done mm -hmm. Well, that's a core values piece. And we right. want to get after that as well in a loving way in relationship, right? Based on relationships and trust um, that that client's uh, core value is. So it all works well, together. So what you just said just then, I think is so important in a loving way, right? Yeah. Because when we have to have those difficult conversations and things can get somewhat contentious, uh, always keep in mind that you're, you want to do that in a loving way that you are trying to improve the situation, add value to the situation, add value to the other person. So at the end, you come both come out of it better uh, okay. as opposed to feeling worse. I think that makes a big, big, big difference. So I know you just said it kind of because I think that's just who you are by nature. Do it in a loving way. But some of us need to rem be reminded of that. Well, and, uh, you know, Iowa nice is a thing, right? So sometimes the most loving thing is to tell someone when they have broccoli in their teeth, okay, metaphorically speaking, yeah. <laughs> you know, when, right. when, they, yeah. when what they're doing is, uh, or, and also being willing to hear it from somebody else, yeah. being, being able yeah. to hear someone give me some feedback that I, that I can't see on my own. How are we going to get uh, better? That's a loving thing. That's right. Absolutely. You know, the word accountability is an interesting word. And we use it a lot in EOS. The accountability chart is an example of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm on a mission. We're on a mission to make that be an amazingly powerful word. Not one that we resist, but instead we welcome. Where Embrace we say, it. I want you to, yeah, I want you to hold me accountable. Help me be better. Help me be yeah. stronger. Right. I want to give my best. So let me know if I can do something different. Or even for me to say, hey, these are my priorities over the next 90 days. Hold me accountable. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a, a matter of, is it a toxic organization or is it an effective team supportive organization? Because in a toxic right. organization, the word accountability is a bad word, right? That's because right. you have manipulation, you have turf, turf battles, people are backstabbing. But in a team supported organization where everybody's working together, accountability is is a good word. It's positive. You know, let's help it each is. other. We're we're yeah. only going to get to the finish line if we work together. You know? That's exactly right. 
So that's one of the reasons why in that level 10 meeting, we review our rocks every meeting. What did we say in our, our last quarterly session? What did we say was most important to get done in the next 90 days? And yeah. keeping line of sight to that every week so we don't lose track. Because otherwise, man, we can get really fired up. This is what we have to do in the next 90 days, right? And then we get back into the business, back into the whirlwind. But what we want to do is keep that front and center because we said it's most important. Let's help each other get there. Yeah, absolutely. Jody, this has been a great conversation on EOS. And so if people, again, you can work virtually and you can travel. Absolutely. To yep. two clients, no matter where they are. But if somebody wants to travel to see you in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, what kind of fun things can they expect to do in Cedar Rapids? Because I know when I say <laughs> we're going to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, somebody might everybody's be like, Yes, let's go. Yeah. It's like Hawaii, yeah. Cedar Rapids, right? <laughs> <laughs> which which should I go to first? <laughs> Well, I've been both, both places. And uh, yeah, I could definitely tell you. I would say um, we have some really great small to medium-sized businesses. I'm going to just name restaurants. Like we have some wonderful restaurants and bakeries and places that you can go. So if you enjoy good food, uh, Cedar Rapids is a wonderful place to come. We also have a great okay. trail system. There's a lot of water sports that people enjoy, fishing and hunting, that kind of thing. Some people love that. Uh, I'm not um, a fisherman or a fisherwoman, what, however that would be. I don't fish. Okay? You don't fish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the terminology, but I know people enjoy that here. Um, yeah. We have in the summertime, our farmer's markets here in Iowa are great. I'm thinking about the one, yeah. the, the farmer's market here in Cedar Rapids, in Des Moines, really great places uh, to go and enjoy not just great produce, but a really great uh, experience for the whole family. Um, what How else? About rag, I think Ragbri. When is Ragbri? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. See, it's I did really, live in Iowa for a short you time. <laughs> Ragbri <laughs> is classic. Um, Ragbri is a the great. Uh, it's a great huge um, bike race across the state of across Iowa. Across the every state, year. and it's grueling. Yeah, yeah you, I. It's not like you you're it, just Jeff? gonna. Oh no, no. I mean, it's not like you just decide. Well, I think next week I'm going to do Ragbri. I mean, no. it's hard. <laughs> it's hard it's hard yeah and you get to go through all these really great towns and people absolutely roll out the red carpet for the rag bry um riders as uh, they come well, through people don't understand it's not all flat right you well bike that's exactly hill. right <laughs> thank you so much for saying that i think in fact we if you're familiar with grant wood the famous artist of course he, yeah. yeah he uh, we live in the land of grant wood uh, you can go to the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, and they love showcasing Grant Wood. Uh, if you're familiar with American Gothic, that one of the most famous paintings ever. Yeah. So if you picture some Grant Wood work, you're going to see that in uh, eastern Iowa. It is a beautiful place. So I, I would pick a farm, farm uh, rolling hills and farmland over ocean view any day of the week. Um, our yeah. daughter is a um, a student out in California. She's studying to be a film director. And actually, oh, wow. in, in the next week, she's bringing a friend home with her who's never been to Iowa and uh, going to kind of roll out the red carpet. So I feel like I'm seeing Iowa in a whole new view, knowing that we're getting ready for <laughs> this, this uh, California awesome. visitor to come. Yeah. Well, if she's not familiar with agriculture, make sure she visits some farms, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Get in a touch with some of, yeah that, for sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. tractor ride yeah so jody how do people get in touch with you to learn more about what you can provide in eos yeah absolutely i would love to talk with anybody who is interested in uh implementing eos i would encourage you to go to eosworldwide.com backslash jody j-o-d-y dash scogan S-K-O-G-E-N. Um, and you can find out all kinds of really good information. You can contact me there. All of my contact information is there on my website. But I'll also give you my number. Uh, so my phone number, you can text or call 319-558-6602. So one more time, that's 319-558-6602. Um, you can email me at jody.scogan at eosworldwide.com. You could reach out to Jeff. Jeff, will you connect us? You if, uh, Absolutely. Okay. 
You bet. Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. I'd love to connect with anyone interested in learning more. Perfect, Jody. Thank you so much for being on Game Changers. I think you've got so much to offer those business owners and decision makers out there trying to do the right thing in their organization and wishing nothing but great success going forward. So thanks well, again Jeff, for being here. Thank you so much for being a game changer. You know, you want to change lives. I can see that in all of your work. So thanks for Absolutely. doing it. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. And before I let you go, I want to remind everybody about my awesome sponsor, Magic Mind. Now, Jody, have you ever heard of Magic Mind? It's this little two ounce drink that you, I take it every morning with my coffee and it's, it's got all of these great ingredients in it. I can't even pronounce a lot of them. Turmeric, uh, vitamin C, I can pronounce vitamin D I can pronounce, but like, uh, ashwaga. I mean, I don't even know what it is, but I know it's good. I good take stuff. it every day and it helps me remain energetic and focused throughout the day. So magic mind, go to magicmind.com, check it out. It's good stuff. Just drink it every morning with your coffee. And I thank them for being a sponsor of game changers. So again, Jody, thank you for being here. Great talking with you, everyone. Today was a great day. Tomorrow will be even better. Peace, everyone.